about this session, I'd really welcome it. And um, if you just want more information about anything that we're going to talk, just, just tweet me and I'll, I'll provide further details for you. So when I've spoken at Joomla Days in the past, I tend to do a start to end instructional session where I provide full details on how to achieve something specific like writing a Joomla module. But today I wanted to keep things a bit more conversational and pick out some of the more interesting concepts in my day-to-day -day work. The nature of video sharing is quite technical because there are certain requirements for video sharing that go beyond those of Joomla. Most people have a crack at installing the requirements themselves, which is a steep learning curve in system administration. And uh, because video files are quite large, there's a lot of tweaking that needs to happen of our web services, like the web server itself or PHP. Um, so all these elements come into it. I've made an awful lot of mistakes along the way down this journey. And I'm not ashamed to admit that it's from our mistakes that we learn, not from our successes. Um, so if you could go away from this session just picking up one thing that makes you think a little bit differently about Joomla or changes the way that you look at it, then that's awesome. But it is quite warm in here and it's the end of the day, so if you just want to have a nap, that's fine too. <laughs> <laughs> so Joomla video sharing, the concept here is that we have our Joomla users and we want them to upload video files to our server. They'll be processed and then we display those video files back to our Joomla users. They can watch them, they can search for videos that they want to see, they can like and dislike and comment on the videos or add videos to their own playlists and reorder them and, and all that kind of good stuff. There's lots of choice out there on the extensions directory. There's probably half a dozen, a dozen video sharing scripts all broadly offering the same type of functionality um, but with their own unique twist. So you can go there, there's free extensions for you just to try out as well. A really important concept in video sharing is our need to process videos after they've been uploaded to the server. We want to process videos for two reasons. Firstly, because we want to extract thumbnail images from the original video file and use those in the gallery to display back to our users. Um, a video gallery without any thumbnails isn't going to be a very friendly experience for our Joomla users at all. And the second reason that we want to process video files is due to transmission over the internet. Um, the, the original video files that we get off our video cameras tend to be very large, so large in dimension, uh, large in file size, and uh, very high bit rates as well. So we want to compress those to achieve a good quality of playback, but still at very low bit rates so that can be transmitted over the internet. And the tool that we use to do that is called FFmpeg. It's the industry standard processing videos on our server. It's free, it's open source, and it's a command line tool that we use to convert and process video formats. So just to quickly give an overview of the concept, our Joomla users will upload uh, video files onto our server through the Joomla web interface. We'll use FFmpeg to generate new versions of the original video file um, in MP4 formats, and we'll also generate new JPEG thumbnails uh, which we'll use in the gallery itself. And we'll use those new files that we've generated with FFmpeg to display the videos back to our Joomla users, again through the Joomla web interface. The idea there is quite simple, but I first of all want to talk about a few security concerns on file uploads and what they might actually teach us about Joomla as well. As soon as we install an extension that actually allows people intentionally to upload video files to our server, we're significantly increasing our security threat. Whenever we install any software onto our server, we're taking a huge amount of trust in those developers and assuming that they've take, taken reasonable steps to ensure that our server isn't going to become compromised. That's true for Joomla itself, but we have a great deal of trust in Joomla because it's used by millions of people um, it's open source and it's contributed to by a very large team of very skilled developers on a daily basis. As we move down to third party components, the usage of those components drops off generally significantly and the number of developers working on them also drops off. We can build trust in third party extensions with the reviews on the extensions directory, but at some point we do have to trust that they're not going to allow our server to be compromised, but rather than just hoping, there are steps that we can proactively take ourselves to mitigate um, attacks if they're going to happen or if we install extensions that do have vulnerabilities. 
Nick did an excellent session this morning on site security and talked about web application firewalls, and that's fantastic, but it's not going to protect us if a third party component we install unintentionally allows the file upload of something that we don't want. So I want to pick out two very specific concerns that we might have about file uploads and we'll talk then about how we might mitigate the risks there. The first and most obvious thing that we want to prevent is the, the, the upload of a malicious file. We don't want to allow upload of arbitrary files that are going to be executable once they're stored onto our server. Uh, the example here is a, a file that I found in my PHP temporary directory a few years ago. It was uploaded as a GIF file, but we can see that it contains PHP. And if we decode that, we can see exactly what the attacker was trying to achieve um, and how completely terrifying it is if we think about what would happen if this was executed on our server. It's, it's totally fatal if we allow someone to upload a PHP file and then execute it on their server. And the second thing that I want to talk about <coughs> is how third-party developers integrate other scripts into their components. The beauty of open source is that we can reuse code and um, we don't have to reinvent the wheel when we're trying to achieve something. So a big part of a video uploading script is to have a nice upload facility that allows the upload of large files that has a nice progress bar so people can see how long it's going to take them to upload a file. And a very nice script that did that a few years ago was the SWF upload script. Completely independent of Joomla, but it was integrated into a lot of Joomla scripts. It's since been abandoned and isn't maintained anymore. When a developer integrates one of these scripts into Joomla, they need to split apart that component and integrate it correctly into, the, into their own Joomla MVC structure in their component. So that any requests that run through that script are going to run through the Joomla entry point. If we don't do that, we're going to have entry points outside of Joomla, and that's going to be a big security risk. And I just want to um, provide an example of this. There was a component a few years ago that integrated SWF upload into Joomla, and there was vulnerability discovered here because what the developer was doing was instead of processing the file uploads through Joomla, they just did it through a standalone PHP file, which was called uploadhandler.php, completely outside of Joomla. So an attacker could construct a, strip, uh, a script like this and just simply push a file <coughs> to that PHP script, which would process it regardless of whether they were logged into Joomla or even had a session in Joomla, and then save to the Joomla images directory with the same file name. So an attacker just could just upload anything to the server and then execute it directly in the image uh, directory, which is obviously something we want to stop because we don't want that to happen. So when we think about how we might achieve that, it's a really important concept is Joomla's entry point. Joomla is always going to be accessed through a single point of entry. And all requests that run through Joomla need to run through this, which is the main index.php file in the Joomla's root directory. There are, of course, hundreds of other files distributed with Joomla, but we don't want any of them to be accessed directly through the web browser. And indeed, if you look at the code in those PHP files, there's actually a definition check at the top of them to ensure that they're not going to be executed at all. And the administrator panel also has its own point of entry, which is the index.php file in the administrator directory. So bearing in mind that there's only ever going to be one PHP file that we want to execute in Joomla, we can use the power of our web server to actually protect us and mitigate risks and stop problems before we actually even reach Joomla. And we'll do this using a HD access file. So HD access files are ways of making configurational changes to the web server on a directory by directory basis. And I'm talking specifically here about the Apache web server. The concept here is the same regardless of what web server you may actually be using. Joomla is distributed with a pre-configured HD access file and the purpose of that file is to perform the rewriting required for the SEF plugin. But if you go to the Joomla documentation website, you'll find this article and Nick actually interestingly said that this article is out of date now and you should look at the one on his um, admin tools website. I think here 
some of the directories that, he refer, that this article refers to, uh, there's some new directories and plugins we put in there and a few changes in the technique used. But the, the, the concept, so this master HD access file is full of really fantastic concepts and ideas to help increase your site security and performance. And I want to pick out three particular sections of this file Bear in mind that we only want to allow one PHP file to be executed. We can look at directories in Joomla, and we realize that there isn't anything in those directories at all that we want to even access, let alone execute. And this is exactly what we're looking at in this first line here. We say there's nothing in the cache directory that we want to access, or the includes languages, libraries, logs, or temporary directory. So this line prevents access to those entirely through the web server. We can't do that for all of the directories in Joomla because some of them do include files that the web server is going to need to access and these are static resource files, so images, CSS files and JavaScript files. So for those directories, some <coughs> components, modules, plugins and templates, we're going to say allow access to the extensions that we want to allow that need to be accessed and prevent access to everything else including PHP files. And at the end, we say look for all of the PHP files in the web space, excluding the main index.php file and forbid access to those as well. So now what we've achieved with just a few lines of code is that even if we install an extension that allows the upload of a PHP file into our web space, the attacker is never going to be able to access that PHP file or execute the code. So we've offered ourselves some really fantastic protect protection against those attacks and if we're monitoring file changes in our web space as Nick suggested then we'll know that that file's been uploaded straight away and we can take action to correct it um, and we can take this a step further and if we go to the directory where our file uploads are going to be saved we could have a HD access file like this which is actually going to prevent access to everything in that directory except for the specific extensions that we want to allow. So for our video sharing scripts, that will be video extensions and thumbnail extensions for the image extensions for the uh, thumbnails that we're creating. So this is just three parts of that master HD access file. It's worth spending as much time as you can looking over that file and uh, picking out the, the concepts and just trying to learn more about the site security because even if you just apply one thing, it may be the thing that actually stops an attack from progressing any further and uh, that awful, awful moment of being hacked. So once we've allowed files uploads onto our server, video files tend to be very large, so how big can we go? <coughs> we've been spoiled recently with a huge expansion in very affordable storage in our local computers and there's web services out there like YouTube that allow the upload of very, very large files. Um, but our web server technology is still really catching up with that, so it's important to be realistic. When we post a file, or, or, when we upload a file through June, we're actually posting data over the HTTP protocol or HTTPS. And by definition, this is the hypertext transfer protocol. So it was originally designed for transferring text. There was a protocol for transferring files, and that was the File Transfer Protocol, or FTP, but we don't want to give all of our Joomla users FTP access to our web space to, to enable them to upload files. So we have to make do with HTTPS. <coughs> the maximum size of files that we can upload are restricted by configurational limits set on our web services, like our web server and in PHP. It's really important to bear in mind that these limits have been set to help prevent abuse of our server resources. So yes, we can tweak them and yes, we can upload them, but it's really important to learn about what it is that you're increasing instead of looking for solutions on forums and applying the first one that works. And where possible, um, try to only apply the changes to the particular domain where it's needed instead of across the entire server. When we decide that we want to increase our upload uh, limits, the first place that we should go to is the system information page in the Joomla administrator because 
In the PHP information tab, we're going to get all of our PHP configuration, and that will be for the master value and for the local value as well, and it's been overridden for this particular general website. So we can see exactly what our PHP Linux would be. But it also gives us information about which PHP handler we're using on the server, and this can affect our upload limits as well. And then obviously gives us more information about the server type, which can be useful uh, when we're looking at tweaking the limits. I was hoping to um, maybe give a, a detailed overview of how we might go about increasing the limits, but there's so many factors here, it would be a talk on its own. So in PHP, there's two limits, which are just straight up. This is the biggest size you can upload directives, and they're the post max size and the upload max file size. Most hosting environments, even if it's a shared host, will give you some kind of mechanism to tweak your PHP configuration for your general website. Um, so if you ask for instructions, they'll provide details on how you can increase those two directives for your website. There'll obviously be some of the limit which they impose, but um, tweaking them up to that limit won't be too much of a problem. Another thing that catches people out quite often is the size of the temporary directory. Because if, if you're trying to upload very large files like Gigabyte, sometimes the, uh, the temporary directory is stored on its own partition on the server, so the disk space there is less than a gigabyte, and obviously the upload isn't going to work, but uh, diagnosing that can be a little bit tricky. It doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, people find it difficult to, to realize what's going on there. So once we've uploaded the, the files onto our server, we want to process those videos to generate our new video formats and thumbnails. So how does Joomla execute FFmpeg? Well, we'll do that using the PHP execute function, which allows us to execute an external program on the server. So we can use it to execute FFmpeg as this example shows, and uh, what we'll do is pass the location of the input file, which is the file that's just been uploaded by the user. Then we'll, the next few parameters are basically saying that we want to generate an MP4 file, and then at the end we'll specify the location where we want to save the new uh, MP4 file that we've just generated, and we'll use that to display the video back to the user. But we want this process to happen automatically. So when a user uploads a video, we want to start the processing of our new videos immediately, but we don't want the user to wait because a large video may take several minutes to uh, process, and of course it's unreasonable to expect and people won't wait for that process to happen after the upload on their browser. What they want to happen is they'll upload the video, the processing will start in the background, and they'll be immediately redirected to your website be able to continue using your services as normal instead of waiting. The system administrators amongst us will know that we can send tasks and processes to the background by adding trailing ampersand to the end of the command as shown here. And the section is in red is saying sending saying that we want to send any of the output from FFN to the bin. And the green section is basically saying that we want to send all the errors to the uh, to the bin as well. And this is fantastic, except that when we upload a, a video, we may want to generate several new videos in different qualities and different formats and generate several new um, thumbnail images as well. We don't want to dump all of that work onto the CPU at exactly the same time because it's going to cause problems. And because we're sending all of the output to the bin, if any of the conversions fail, we won't have any information about why that's happened. Uh, and if we choose that we want to reprocess something later, it's going to be difficult for us to do that. So when we write our video sharing extension, we integrate some kind of processing manager, which when new video files are uploaded, will queue up new processing tasks in this process manager. And we can manage and execute them through the Joomla interface. It means that we can save all of the FFmpeg output um, to the Joomla log files, and we can access that at any time through the Joomla administrator, so it's a, it's a much better way to do things. So now, instead of executing FFmpeg directly after the upload, we'll simply open a Joomla URL such as this. We can send it to the background, so the user will be redirected to the site, 
And what will happen when this cell opens is that the processing will start and one at a time we will um, start to process the new videos and they'll be generated in a few minutes for the user to start using. And this is fantastic, but there's one big disadvantage here because we want to process the videos on our own server. So invoking the web server to do this is completely unnecessary. We're consuming unnecessary resources and as soon as we do it over the internet, we're opening ourselves up to all of the timeouts in our web server. Again, which is totally unnecessary. So wouldn't it be fantastic if we could run Joomla without actually using a web server? Well, this is exactly the point of the Joomla command line interface application. It allows us to run Joomla, but without using a web server. And this is really powerful because now when our users upload a video, instead of executing FFmpeg directly, and instead of just opening a Joomla URL, we can just execute PHP directly on the server and pass it the path to our Joomla CLI application, like this example. And so the user will be redirected to use the website and we'll just kick off the processing in the background and we won't have any problems with timeouts. So even if the processing takes an hour to complete, it's just going to run happily. And we can use the CLI tasks like this to schedule and the processing with Chrome if we want to. And the ability to automate tasks like this and schedule them through Chrome was a real motivating factor in separating the Joomla framework from the Joomla CMS. For developers, when we have access uh, to writing Joomla CLI applications, we can use the same framework that we use every day and when writing our Joomla extensions, and we can also reuse code um, that we might have in our C uh, CMS extensions, such as the models, so we can um, execute those models to access data or perform particular tasks. And this saves us a great deal of time. I feel like even though the Joomla CLI applications and those features have been available in Joomla for a very long time. A lot of the Joomla community still only sees Joomla as a web service and hasn't really necessarily been brought along for the journey on this, possibly through lack of practical examples of how they might use CLI applications in their day-to-day -day usage of Joomla. Well, there are already a lot of CLI applications out there we can use. My video extension has one which can convert and generate thumbnails um, for video files that have been uploaded by users in exactly the same, in exactly the way that we've just discussed. But the Kiba Backup has a CLI application as well, where you can automate the update of the Kiba Backup and take, list, and download backups of Joomla websites. And Joomla's actually shipped with CLI applications now as well. So in the CLI app directory of the Joomla distribution, there's a bunch of CLI applications. And these can help you purge expired cache files, which should be done quite regularly, but generally isn't. Um, and there's one for cleaning up Joomla after upgrades when files should have been deleted, but for some reason were not. And it's very possible that lots of other third party extensions you're using also have CLI applications, which may really help improve the performance on your website and opti optimize um, things for you and make your day-to-day -day life a lot easier. So it's worth having a look through documentation on those sites to see if there is anything that might help you. So I just want to finish uh, today by, now we've talked about uploading and processing, just to talk about the video playback in Joomla. Way back in the 2000s, for the first time, we had access to um, flash video files, which is a new video file container that allowed us to compress videos to such an extent that we could have reasonable playback, but at low, low enough bit rates to transmit them over the internet. In order to watch them in our browsers, we'd have to install the Adobe Flash Player, but that was so prevalent at the time that you could have 99% coverage um, across all devices by using this format because everyone used Adobe Flash Player. And then a little bit later, um, an improved codec came along, H.264, 
this generated videos in a new container, MP4 files, and this had improved compression, so for the first time we could watch high definition videos over the internet. Then a little bit later, um, HTML5 video element, element came and the HTML5 standard was only ratified in 2014, I think, but it's been used since 2010 and it was really spearheaded by Apple. So the HTML5 video element allows us to natively watch videos in our browser without any of the Bennett plugins. So instead of needing the Adobe Flash Player, we can just watch it in the browser. And uh, we had a really good session earlier about HTML5 pictures as well. So, but HTML5 video elements have been supported for quite a few years now. Apple developed support for HTML5 uh, video element, and um, they did this in with the, H, the PHP4 format. So, um, the, the MP4 video format. Uh, controversially, Apple dropped support for Flash, meaning that if people wanted to watch videos in their uh, iOS devices, they would have to do it natively through a HTML5 video player, um, but they could do it with the MP4 videos. But that was okay, because if you generated an MP4 video for your video gallery, um, you could support iOS devices, um, but of course, for browsers that didn't support MP4 video natively with HTML5, uh, you could just fall back to the Flash player, which most people would have installed as well. <coughs> so Joomla integrated a really great responsive web development framework when they integrated Bootstrap. And now, of course, responsive templates are standard, and you can uh, download thousands of them really for Joomla on the internet. So by using Joomla, Bootstrap, and generating the MP4 files, you can offer your Joomla users a really unified video experience across all devices. And that's why Joomla is, of course, so fantastic. So Joomla's entry point Joomla should always be accessed through a single point of entry. We can leverage that knowledge by using HD access and uh, to offer our server more protection against possible exploits and uh, extensions that we're going to install. Server limits exist to prevent abuse of our resources, but we can tweak them and we can increase them to help upload much larger video files. Once the files have been uploaded, we'll execute them with FFmpeg, and uh, we'll process media in the background through the execution of the FFmpeg package. But we can do this in the background and bypass the web server to automatically run tasks by using Joomla CLI applications. And then when it comes to video playback, if we generate MP4 video files, we can display videos in iOS devices, and um, all other types of devices as well by using HTML5 video or falling back to Flash. So I know that we've covered quite a lot of uh, topics there and I hope it hasn't come across as too fragmented but I just wanted to um, try and open up a little bit possibly of broader understanding um, about Joomla and uh, looking at how things might teach us a little bit more about Joomla and if we dig a little bit deeper they certainly can do that. Thanks very much for listening, and uh, I think I've probably got time for a couple of questions if people have any. Yes. <coughs> Processing your uh, again, that was a system of do you get a, a, a feedback that you can sort of monitor to say that this process is completed, or is it just sort of shot off to the thing and then you don't know when it's completed? Well, it's sort of because sort of, of the method that we use, <coughs> when we, what we'll do is, We'll execute the uh, Joomla CLI application, and we'll do that in the background. But when that's starting to be executed, we'll, from inside that application, we'll need to execute FFmpeg again. But we won't send that to the background. So we'll wait for that response. 
because it's already been sent to the because the, the process running it has been sent to the background. So we we execute ethical peg, but in the CLI application we actually wait for the response so we can take it and save it to the Joomla uh, log files and they can be accessed later uh, in the Joomla administrator when we check our process manager. So if it was just running the background, there wouldn't be any system feedback. No, it, well, in that particular example that I gave, I sent it to the bin, so it was actually bin. But you could, if you want, even if you sent it to the background, you could save it um, to a particular file if you wanted to, and then access it later once it was complete. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? So, yes. Um, I'm just trying to think through this question. <laughs> how, how? So there are. Um, Social networking type um, components that you can build into a site like Easy Social and, and Jump Social and so on, and, and they provide the functionality to be able to upload media, videos, photos, and so on. So, how does what you just described there fit in that sort of context? Um, would you be suggesting that there is a different way that we should be allowing people to upload videos or? Um, are there things that we need to look at from a security perspective in using those components that we need to consider and adjust? Or? I know that John Social and Easy Social both have the same built-in uh, video features and they work in a really similar way to the way that I described so they'll, they'll have the same requirement of FFM type and they'll do the same thing. Okay. Um, in terms of the security of video uploads, again, whenever you install anything that does that, you're just hoping that the Developers have taken necessary actions mm. to mitigate risks, um, but you can be pro proactive if they haven't as well, and stop attacks if they're uploading PHP files, um, which are going to be executable later. I just think. Which comes back to your point about um, becoming familiar with the HD access files and exactly how yeah. you can better use those. Exactly, and yeah. got those set up right. Because it's not just necessarily video uploads or image uploads extensions. A lot of extensions allow file uploads um, and they all are susceptible. Uh, and indeed, it doesn't even have to have an upload feature in an extension to, to be vulnerable against the possibility of an <coughs> So the, that HD access um, concept and idea can, it should just really be standard, even if you don't allow file uploads anywhere on the site. Because it, it's, it's the concept of having a file uploaded somehow through some risk and then you can just stop it. And the reason that I picked that out is because I've been broadsided by that in the past, totally. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, you learn from your mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it, yes um, I'm quite, uh, basically, I'm very happy to, to hear that CLI can can help you actually bypass the server using the server resources. Yes. And uh, I'm not a programmer, I'm not a developer, but I really would like to dive into CLI. So what would you suggest in terms of uh, this environment? Do I have to have, do I have to become a Linux administrator? Do I have to learn CLI commands themselves? Or so the Joomla CLI scripts, all it, all it means is that you run them on the command line uh, yourself, so you, you don't to use CLI scripts. You don't have to have any system administrator experience. Although, I mean, if, for example, the, the CLI script that allows purging of um, expired cache files. Cache, yeah. Um, if you wanted to use that, you just need to schedule it on your server using cron. Like so a cron, okay, if, cron job. Yes, you can be a system administrator to, to set that up, but most hosting panels will give you some kind of facility to to set up cron jobs. Um, and of course, if you're using Windows or some different server environment, there'll be some equivalent um, mechanism there for you to do that. Um, but no, you, you don't have to have a system administrator uh, knowledge to, to use them. We're learning to write those uh, bar scripts help. Say that again. If I know how to how to write those scripts, like bash scripts, I think is it, uh, um, which uh, execute basically. Uh, yeah. I mean the Joomla CLI uh, applications really are just a PHP file oh which right. you'll write, and 
and the point is that you can access and, and use Joomla but without running it on as a web service, so you're not starting the web um, service at all. Okay. I mean, you could use them. You could use Joomla CLI scripts in Bash scripts if you if you wanted to, but. Um, I don't have to buy. So but if you wanted to write a Joomla CLI application, you'd, you'd write it in PHP, yeah, and you sure. need to be familiar with, with, with Joomla. In writing the CLI application, you just use PHP to call Bash script, or you use Bash script. Uh, you <laughs> couldn't use a bash bit because the Joomla CLI application um, is just a PHP file uh, itself. So, um, yeah, you could integrate them into the bash bits that were performing some function and so if you wanted to, but it's not necessarily you can just um, execute them using PHP in the command line. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you.